everyone, welcome back to another Cook With Me. Today I'm going to prepare some curried pumpkin with saltfish or curry pumpkin and saltfish, some fried plantain and some dusty roti. So come join me in the kitchen today. So it is currently 1.36 a.m. I'm just about to make some green seasoning for the week. I just totally forgot about making it. Um, I decided to do it at this hour. So here all the ingredients I'm using. I have some cilantro. A nice big bunch of cilantro. This is really nice and fresh and green. So I didn't use all the leftovers. I put it in this glass of water and I covered it with this freezer bag. So you just put these stems in water. I put a rubber band on it just to keep it together and just let these stems go into the water. And then you cover it with a bag. You can cover it with any type of plastic bag or some plastic wrap or whatever you have to just cover it just so that it doesn't wilt quickly in the fridge. So this is just gonna stay in there for when I need some fresh cilantro during the week. And for the rest of the bandana, I wrapped it in a damp paper towel and put it into a freezer bag also and I put it back into the drawer of the fridge. And for these, you can um, you can do this with basil also and different types of herbs. Um, for like thyme and stuff, you could put that in the paper towel. Over here I have the scythe or the scallion, um, also called green onion, some garlic, hot peppers. These aren't very, very hot. They have a nice flavor, but they're not that hot like you would think. I know a lot of people tell me that I use a lot of pepper, but these actually, they have a lot of flavor similar to pimento, but they are a little hotter than pimento. And if I did have pimentos, I would have used some, but I don't have any. I have, um, this is supposed to be a scotch bonnet pepper, but it really do have any heat. So I'm just using these for some flavor and just a little kick. And here we have the star of the show. Can't make your trini green seasoning without bandania. So these are some really long ones. Like they look like they're on steroids. But they're smelling legit. They're smelling just like the trini bandania. Like you know that strong odor. I'm really pleased with the type of bandania we get in here in Texas. So what I'm going to do is chop these in a mini chopper. You can do it in a blender if you want. I like it dry. I don't like it too wet. So I don't really add water to mine unless it really needs water. I have some ice trays here. Um, I usually just put it in this freezer bag. But um, I used to use the ice trays a long time ago and then I stopped because it was easier to use this. Because I would just break off these. I just flatten the seasoning in it, close it and then break off these. But I said, let me try back the ice trays, even though it's a headache to fill all these. But it's so easy to come out. You just pop one out because these are silicone trays. So let's make some green seasoning.
can lead to a sturdy dough now. I like when um when I make pumpkin, I like to use a dough sturdy. So I'm just doing like three cups of flour. Come and love your tea, so just to make you know. One tablespoon of bacon powder, some salt, just mix that. So this is how I like my dough to look. Once it pulls together, you don't want to over knead it. Just once it pulls together into one big dough ball, then that's good enough. And then you let it soak and then you come back in and you knead it. So if you have wrist issues like me and you get really bad cramps in your wrist, um, it's best to invest in a stand mixer if you need dough a lot. Kevin doesn't like roti too much. I don't really make bread very often because of the same reason. Because of my wrists. Every time I need dough, I end up being in so much pain for the whole week after. So I don't really use my hands too much to knead dough anymore. I just use the fork and I just bring it together. And then in the end, I just pull it together and form it into this dough ball. So what I'm going to do is just put some oil on top and then I'll let it sit. So this is some avocado oil. Just put some, press it in. This also keeps the top of the dough moist so it doesn't dry out. So I'm just going to cover it with a damp paper towel and I'll leave it in the microwave. Leaving it in the microwave helps it to stay nice and moist and um, not dry out. So let's prepare the other ingredients for the pumpkin to carry. So I totally forgot that I didn't show you all the seasoning in the ice trays. So let's open them up. Once they're frozen, you can take them out and put them in a Ziploc. The only, the only reason I don't really like um, using the ice trays is because I like my seasoning chunky and when it's chunky like this it's hard to get into the ice tray. So if you notice the last clip that I was showing you all when I was trying to fill it, it was a whole mess. So. When you grind your seasoning with a lot of water and it's very smooth and flowing, it's easy to get into the ice trays. Especially the type of ice tray I have, it's kind of small. So if I'm going to do this, I have to get those bigger ice trays. Yeah, this is too small to put this type of seasoning in. It's too chunky and a little too dry, so I ended up having to like pack it down compressing it into the little tray so I just got a freezer bag here I'm gonna pop them out into the freezer bag and this one get a little frosty so um you want to cover it also because this seasoning scent is gonna stink up your freezer so this is what the little seasoning cubes look like, your very own seasoning cube. So when you're ready to use it, you just put it in a little saucer or a little bowl and you nuke it in the microwave and it'll come back fresh and nice. Or you can just take one of these and add them to the pot and the heat is gonna melt it.
or defrost it, I should say. So these are our little green seasoning ice cubes. So I'm just gonna pop them out and put them into the Ziploc. And I like these ice trays because they're silicone at the bottom. So it's very easy to just pop ice or anything out. You know them plastic ice trays? I remember we had plenty of those when I was growing up. And every time you try to, you had to do it like this and like this to get the ice out. And it would always break. I'm so happy they invented silicone ice trays. So these are little seasoning cubes. So this is what it looks like. Very, very easy. Makes your work a lot easier. When you're ready to use it, you just thaw it out or put it in the microwave and defrost it a little bit. So when you're ready to use it, you could also just add it to the pot and the heat will thaw it out. So while the dough soaks, um, I have some water on the stove heating up that's going to boil the saltfish. But I wanted to show you the pumpkin I'm using. You know, back home in Trinvago, we just say pumpkin, as in P-O-N-G-K-I-N, pumpkin. So my friend Carrie, her mom told me, Auntie Kama, you might have seen that video. Um, Auntie Kama told me that this is the best type to use. It's nice and sweet and you don't need to add sugar. So this is what I'm going to use today. And at first I was going to make pumpkin to curry, but Auntie Kama said to make the curry pumpkin with saltfish. Because I was going to make the pumpkin to curry and put some saltfish in it, but she told me how she makes hers and I'm going to try it like that today. So firstly I'm just going to wash out the saltfish. This is the brand that I've been getting here at Fiesta. This is my first time actually using this specific brand. I might have used it one or two times in New York. So this is actually the only brand we get here in Fiesta, the packaged one. Over here for some reason you can't get saltfish that easily. So my tap has a, it has a drip. I have to call maintenance to come fix it. Just in case you see it dripping and think I'm wasting water. So two of these packages for five dollars. Over here, this is four ninety nine for four pound sixteen ounces. So I'm just gonna rinse out that heavy salt. So now that it's washed, this is going to go into the pot of boiling water. So you usually boil saltfish so you could get most of the salt out. This one actually only needs to be boiled for about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, some brands may require you to boil it once or twice or you can even soak it overnight. I honestly just prefer to boil it. <laughs> So I'm just adding it to the water. If you hear that kind of clicking sound, that's just the um, stove. So I'm going to leave this to boil for about 15 minutes. While this boils, I'll work on cutting up that squash. So I'm going to start cutting through this squash or pumpkin. I 
I'm using this serrated knife because it helps me to get a better hold on it. you're putting in All your hopes and efforts are all in vain Who will pick you up when you've lost everything Does it all become for granted So I've finally gotten it open. I can already feel my wrists are gonna be pain and later. I'll have to take a painkiller. So I either use a serrated knife or a regular knife and I just cut the pumpkin into smaller slices. Ooh, happiness requires work every day. As you can see, the salt fish is boiling away. I'm gonna turn it off. And I'll strain it, wash it out again, taste it just to make sure that it's not too salty, and then I'll um, show you what to do next. So I just took the salt fish off, I drained it, washed it out, and I put it aside just to cool down. So while that cools down, I'll peel the pumpkin. So once you cut it into smaller pieces, well, smaller strips like this, it's easier to peel. So the first thing you want to do is remove the seeds from the middle here. And the bad thing about peeling this is that the knife can slip easily and cut you. So you have to be very, very careful. So once you remove the center, now you just peel it. So I'm going to finish peeling the pumpkin and I'll see you all in a little bit. Let me listen to our DJ Gel mix here. It's time for your soccer takeover with DJ Gel. Getting you ready for color.
now that the pumpkin is peeled and ready, now I'm just gonna slice it up. So this is how we do it. This pumpkin is a bit hard. So it doesn't slice very easily. So you basically want to cut it in flat, small pieces. So that once it's added to the pot, it melts easily. My suggestion is if you know you're going to make pumpkin, prepare it the night before. So cut it up and put it in the fridge. And when you're cutting it, you don't want to wash it because once you wet the pumpkin, it melts in the fridge and it goes bad quickly. So what I usually do is I always have pumpkin in my freezer um, for soups and for pilau. So I just pull out a few pieces when I'm making soup or pilau. So I cut up the pumpkin and set it aside. Now I just want to work on the dough again. So I'm just going to go in, give it a knead again. See how nice and soft it is? And I didn't touch it since the last time. So once you let it sit, it gets nice and smooth without you having to overwork it. And then for parata and for dough steroti, you don't want to overwork the dough. This is basically parata dough. It's just we're not going to make the layers. We are going to make layers of dough, but not like parata. So now that it's nice and smooth, I'm just going to cover it again, let it sit. And then we could make the little loys or the loyas for the dough stew roti. While the dough sits again, I'll cut up the aromatics for the pot. So I'm gonna cut up the pepper now and I remembered something from the last Cook With Me video. Someone mentioned that they always see me cutting up hot peppers with my hand and they asked me if it ever burns. And it does burn but then as soon as I cut the pepper, I go and wash my hand right away. But last time when I used this pepper, my entire face burned after even though I washed my hands. So I don't know if she put she goat mouth on me or what. So I'm gonna show you what I do. Um, I just hold it with a fork and I chop it like this. This just helps you to um, get control of it without having to touch it. I used to do this back um, when I was home by my mom and I was playing with Zane because I didn't want to get Peppa on his hands or anything. So it's as simple as that. So now I'm going to make my little loyas for the roti. So this is three cups of flour. And from this, I want to get about, I would say 16 to 18 roti. So let's break it in half. 
I like my dossier to be really thin. So I just broke it into four and then I'm going to break each of those into two. So these are my little lawyers as always. And two or three of these are going to stack up on top of each other to make the dose dirty. I'm going to do some three in one and some two in one. So let me just dust this tray and then lay these out here. So dosti actually means friendship in Hindi. So it's like a friendship rudi. Two in one. So it's like two friends. <laughs> two friends stuck together. gonna mash up the soul fish a little bit not too much I like it still a little bit chunky I just love 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 soul fish <laughs> I remember Kevin's grandmother, his nanny, his mom's mom, she always had fried saltfish in her fridge. Like she would just fry it on the weekend, put it in a Ziploc bag and leave it in the fridge. And anything she eaten, she would just take out her saltfish bag and put some on the side of her food. So this is a good size for me. I actually don't like it too small when I'm making this dish. Um, you don't want it as small as when you do in bulgeol. You don't want it so fine. This is a good size. It's gonna break down even more when you when you put it into the pot. So this is good. You wanna be able to see it and you wanna be able to bite into it when you eat in your food. So to my pot I'm going in with some oil. So I was going to add the aromatics then and I just remembered that Auntie Kama said to add the salt fish in first. So add a little more oil. Someone said it's unhealthy to cook with oil, right? But if you use a good hot healthy oil, then you don't need to worry about using excess oil. So I was just about to add the onions and all the aromatics into the hot oil. And I just remember that Auntie Kama told me to add the salt fish first. So I'm going to follow Auntie Kama's recipe for this. She said to add the salt fish first, let it fry up and then add everything else. So that's what I'm going to do. Originally what I was going to do, I was going to fry it on the side and let it get crispy and then add it on top the um, pumpkin. But let me try her way and see how it turns out. The onion, the chopped onion. And some peppers went in too. Mm. 
Mm, this starts to just smell like bull dough. Yum. Now I'll add the garlic and the jalapeno peppers. If you have pimento peppers, then add that. I so wish I had pimento peppers. I think you're probably tired of me saying that now. And he said once I add the aromatics and the salt fish to add my curry in. So I'm doing a light curry today, so I'm just going to add a little. And I always like to add a little bit of jeera. This is roasted ground jeera. Some black amjar masala. And a little bit of turmeric. So let this fry for about five minutes on a medium high heat. Now I'm gonna add the pumpkin in and I'm gonna lower the heat all the way down to about medium low. Cause pumpkin is something that has to cook on a low heat. Because this salt fish has a good amount of salt in it, I'm not going to add salt just yet. If you're doing this without the salt fish, then you can add a little bit of salt now. And you want to cover it and let it steam. So while the pumpkin cooks and steams, I'm going to work on the 2-in-1 or the dusty roti. So first, I'll make my 3-in-1 roti. So I'll choose out the smallest layers. Right. So the smallest layers are gonna make the three in one roti. So my grandmother said she loves the three in one roti because she likes to eat that middle layer. She said sometimes she likes to do four in one. I'm not doing four in one today. Um, Kevin just likes two in one and I prefer the three in one. It's it's nice and soft and just like my grandmother, I prefer the, the middle layer. She made it for me last time I was in Trinidad. You would have seen her making her toasty roti. Um, so I tasted it that day when she made it and it was so good. She was right when she said the middle is good, the middle layer. So I like to use butter as the filling. So I'm using some Kerrygold butter. This is pure butter, it's Irish butter. So you always want to use the good stuff when you're making roti. My nana and his brothers, they used to make roti to sell and they would make roti for weddings and prayers in the village. And I always remember them using fern leaf butter. I don't think they use Kerrygold, but they use fern leaf or anchor. And their roti used to come out soft and nice and you didn't need milk or anything. All they used was flour, baking powder, um, the fern leaf butter, and some water. And I think sometimes they used ghee, but the butter was a little cheaper than the ghee. So that's why they chose butter. So here I'll get two three-in-one rotis. I'm gonna dip one in flour. And my mom, when she's making hers, she just does oil and flour. So she'll dip one in oil and one in flour. So this one, I'll open it out. I'm 
and spread some butter. And then stick both of them together. So now on top of this one, I'm going to add more butter. This one is going to have flour. So just add some flour on top of this. So you basically just want to stick the three together and make them into one. So this is how it looks. I think you could see the three layers there. So I'm just going to set this down and let it soak for a bit and then we'll start making some roti. So now for the actual dosti roti, or the two-in-one, you'll need two loyas, and it's the same process. So dosti means friendship. Dosti is a Hindi word. So I think it means like, you know, two friends. It's a friendship roti.
just gonna roll out the roti. This is a three in one. So I have a mixture of oil and butter here. That's what I'm gonna use on the tawa.
creature runs back into the pot. Ooh, it's mashing up nice. This pumpkin was still a bit green. It doesn't have a lot of water, but it have it has a texture like sweet potato. So I actually don't really add seasoning and pumpkin, but since it's curried today, I'm gonna add one of these. And I wanna add a little bit of water because I find it's still dry. Let's just add a little bit. So the pumpkin is actually done right now. I just want to leave it a little bit longer just to make sure that seasoning gets incorporated. And I'm gonna add a little bit of salt because I just tasted it and it has a little bit less salt. So just add a sprinkle there. <laughs> like I seasoned this spoon instead of the pumpkin. Okay. So that is good there. And to finish, I'll add a little bit of jira. So a little bit of roasted ground jira goes on top. And that is it. No sugar or anything. This specific squash, it's really sweet compared to the other types of squash or pumpkin. And to finish it, if you have some curry leaves or carapile leaves, you could add some on top. You could even chunky the pot with it too. So I'm going to turn it off. If you want to add some um, fresh herbs or anything, you can add. Pumpkin is something that tastes good simple. So you don't need to add too many ingredients to make it taste nice. It already has a lovely flavor. This one is a Japanese squash and it's really really sweet so if you're looking for a nice squash or a pumpkin to make pumpkin to carry then try out this one that I used you really don't need to add any sugar to it we are the love survivors we are the lucky ones finished now it's time to eat so 
So I totally forget I had some plantains that I bought a few days ago and I left it in the bag. When you leave it in the bag, um, plantains actually let out ethylene gas, so that helps it to ripen. So if you want to ripe something quickly, just put it in a bag with some plantain or some bananas. So I'm actually just going to fry it to go with the curry pumpkin and the roti. So Kevin said he likes when it cut in three. Well, he said his mom did this for him. Cut in three and then in three again. So these are for me. Cut in it really thin. He likes when it's on the thicker side. So dinner is finally ready. I have some of the curried pumpkin with saltfish, the toasty roti to eat it with, and some fried plantain. And of course I have my enamel plate. This enamel plate gain real action. I need to get a few when I go back home. Oh hey, if any of you know where I can get those old school enamel plates like this or the ones with the flowers on it, let me know because I really want to go get some when I go back home. I usually go to Fair and Square but they only have like one pattern. And I know someone mentioned a place on High Street in San Fernando so if you know the name of that store please leave it in the comments below. Or please message me and let me know where it is. Hey everyone, so I hope you enjoyed cooking with me today. I am really excited to eat this. I love eating pumpkin with toasty roti. And I'm so thankful that Auntie Kama shared her recipe for this curry pumpkin with saltfish because Kevin really enjoyed it and I did too when I tasted it. So thank you again for joining me in the kitchen today. I hope to see you all next time. If you have any questions or anything, I want to do the videos more like a question answer so while I'm cooking I'll answer some of your questions. So I'm happy that you all are enjoying cooking with me in the kitchen. Please let me know all your feedback and your suggestions, your thoughts and everything in the comment box below. If you like the video make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet subscribe and ring the bell so you'll be notified of all the new videos. Thank you so much again for watching and thank you for always being here. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye! Will you say mom? <laughs> I never used to want to eat curry pumpkin and saltfish. No, when you were small, you never had curry pumpkin and saltfish. I know you're making that. Well, I didn't so even know I ever eat that in my life. I thought I never had it before. Six years younger, I had pumpkin and peas. And now look, you're making all that. I seriously never had pumpkin and um, saltfish. Well, no. curried. Saltfish and auntie Sita is the making too. Oh, okay. I know we you make curry pumpkin with shrimp, or was it just... Pumpkin with shrimp. Pumpkin with shrimp and um, peas. Oh, okay. Peas. So it's the next day and Kevin wanted some curry shrimp with aloo. So I made that with some jasmine rice and a little mango chow on the side. And of course this goes good with dosti roti also. 
So I will be eating some of that pumpkin takari or the curried pumpkin with some shrimp and some dosti roti.